In 1961, the quintessential English-style dancer emerged. Anthony Dowell became known as the greatest British male dancer in history. Refined, reserved, and graceful. By the time that I joined the Royal Ballet, he had become the director of the company, where we worked together for over a decade. When you first joined the company, did you appreciate that you were this young talent at all? Rudolf had arrived in our midst by then, and as a consequence of that, it put the spotlight very much on male dancing. Because of such a phenomenal talent and because of drawing in audiences to the opera house, it shifted the spotlight onto the role of the male dancer being a very worthwhile part of the whole ballet. So well, the choreographers a... suddenly looked at male dancers differently, I think, didn't they? Well, I think they saw there were possibly, yes, more possibilities mm -hmm. instead of being just the partner behind, enhancing the look of the ballerina. My big thing was to try and make things look effortless and natural. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't really a dancer that was a great virtuoso dancer with a lot of panache. But you could do the um, roles, those. Yes, but in my own sort of way. When I watch footage of you, especially, was probably the most significant was Oberon. The male dancer now is used to these lovely, soft, you know, slow jumps. You know, they have that strength. But you had to jump and move fast yes. and turn. And, I mean, the I suppose that's what angles. was unusual about the ballet, was for a male dancer to be moving fast. What sort of satisfies me is now when I teach the role to the dancers of today who are very technically gifted, mm. um, it still kills them. Of course yes. it does. Yeah. As the 1960s progressed, equilibrium between the men and women was becoming the norm. 